Two more times for Q. I wish we had longer by then. All right, you guys ready for your last comic? Yeah. This is the last one of the night. I kind of want to take my time to, to introduce them. Welcome to Gavin Myers. <laughs> Blessed to be here. I've only been doing comedy since May, so if it sucks, you know, at least I'm the last one. <laughs> I just want to start off with a quick impression, and it takes me a second to get ready, so. And what and there's a little setup. What it is, is Drew Carey at a costume party dressed as Mr. T. <laughs> okay, so um, I just want to give you guys a heads up. I am really, really high on hugs right now. <laughs> I had three before the show, and <laughs> I don't know if I could take one more, man. Hugs are better than drugs. That's what they used to try and tell us. Fuck you. Hugs aren't better than drugs. Hugs are better on drugs. <laughs> then they came around with just say no. Just say no. My parents were like, I was 14 or 15. They came to me and they said, Gavin, you have to quit doing cocaine. And I just said, no. <laughs> I hate when people say stupid shit. Like, a friend of mine just died, and, and somebody was like, well, he was so full of life. Yeah, well, now he's not. He's full of worms. <laughs> and then they say other stupid shit like, hey, if I don't see you before Christmas, have a Merry Christmas. Like, it's October fucking 1st, and you're wishing me a Merry Christmas. If we're good enough friends for that to matter, you'll see me before then. And besides that shit, I don't celebrate Christmas, so you're pretty much wasting your time. <laughs> And then the one other thing I hate people say, and my fiance says, she's like, honesty is the best policy. I'm like, okay, how are you going to feel next time you ask me if your ass looks fat in those jeans? Is that still <laughs> the best policy? <laughs> really? <sighs> I'm poor, I do comedy and stuff, so I'm kind of struggling <laughs> on money. And don't you hate when your car makes these embarrassing noises? And it's always the worst when you're like downtown around a bunch of people and everybody's looking at you like you just raped somebody's baby or something. And, my car, I hate it. It starts out small, you know, like something I call a radio noise. If I can turn the radio up loud enough to not hear it, fine, it works. But then it started getting bad the other day. It's like, and I was like, what the fuck is that? And I couldn't figure it out, and it kept going. It was like, getting louder and louder. So I pulled over, and I turned the car off, and the noise is still going, so I walked back towards the trunk, and I could finally tell what it was. It was like, let me the fuck out of the trunk! <laughs> So I was raised Catholic, obviously, you can tell. Um, not so much with like the church and the strict rules and stuff, it was just a lot of molestation going on. And I mean, religion was confusing for me as a child because at one point, I mean, I don't know if it was we couldn't afford pork chops or we just weren't allowed to eat pork, I thought maybe I was half Jewish. I heard of biracial children, but bi-religious, it just seemed weird to me, but pretty much sealed it when they made me save the wrappers from my Hershey's Kisses to wrap up our next baked potato. <laughs> so I figured, fuck it, if I'm half Jewish, I'm going to find me a Jewish girlfriend. So I went online, and I found this really cool girl, and she kept telling me, oh, I'm so anal, I'm so anal, and I was excited, because nobody had ever let me try that shit before. <laughs> Turns out there's two different meanings to that one. And I also found out it's not kosher to pork a Jew. <laughs> Um, I, I just heard on the news the other day that uh, gangs have increased 40% since 2009. And it's pretty obvious. I mean, like, if you go down and take a shit, sit down in a public bathroom, there's tagging all over the wall. I'm thinking, what kind of pussy can only claim the hood that is the bathroom? What are they, like, hanging out in their doo-doo rags, flashing the number two for their gang sign and shit? I think of these stupid things. I don't know why. But the other day I see a poster that says, Jack Daniels reminds you to drink responsibly. Like, well, that's pretty far down the line. That's like heroin reminding you to shoot up responsibly. That's like getting a big bag of weed from the pot club and it's got a sticker. Munchies reminds you to eat responsibly, as you can tell I do. 
<laughs> Too much wheat, not enough healthy food, I think. But drinking responsibly, it is important because you ever wake up in the morning and there's a pair of panties on the floor, you're not sure whose they are? <laughs> I lucked out this week. The kid's mom stitched his name into the waistband, so I know exactly who's the pair. Horrible. It's not my fault. My parents were into cocaine-fueled orgies when I was a kid, and I didn't even like cocaine at that point. <laughs> so, I've been laying around touching my balls a lot lately, because I like to. And uh, I, I thought that I had found a lump, and it freaked me out, man. I couldn't believe it. So, after five or six days of procrastinating, because I'm a man and I don't want to go to the hospital for anything, I decided, okay, I'm going to go. So, I'm sitting in there waiting for the doctor. And I'm, you know, I'm pulling on my wiener. I don't want him to think his is better than mine or something. I'm not saying I'm small. I mean, I'm average for a young Asian boy. <laughs> so he finally comes in, and he, he takes the family jewels in his hands, and after five or six minutes of Dr. Frostnuckle giving me, give me the fondle, he looks me in the eyes and says, I'm sorry, I just don't feel anything. And I couldn't help but wonder if he meant a lump on my balls or an emotional connection. <laughs> but it's good, because my mom always wanted me to date a doctor, so it's, I think we're headed in the right direction. So while I'm there, you know, I'm getting closer to 40, I thought, maybe I should get a prostate exam just to make sure. I don't want to die from some shit I could have prevented. So I, I asked the doctor about it, and of course, I get the funny doctor. He's like, well, can you fit us in today? <laughs> All right, jackass, we'll see who's funny. About two minutes into it, we both discovered something a little weird. Um, <laughs> after a short prostate massage, I was suffering from premature ejaculation, and I fart when I climax. <laughs> It was a little weird for both of us. But I actually became an uncle recently, Uncle Gavin. Woo yeah. Or at least that's what the married lady who I'm fucking told her kids to tell, call me <laughs> when dad's around. Uh, I'm kidding, that's horrible. If I want to fuck a lady with kids, I'll fuck my own wife. <laughs> the job market has been really rough lately. I've been looking and looking and looking. And I, I can't find anything, but I always get excited. I'm looking through the paper and I see drug testing required. I'm like, well, fucking A, I'll test all your drugs. <laughs> Some reason you haven't gotten a job yet. I guess there's two different meanings to that one, too. So, between looking for jobs and trying to do comedy, I just sit around and watch a lot of TV, and I get so bored with it that I finally decided, you know, I'm just going to shut the volume off and make up my own shit to what's going on. Like commercials, I'll just advertise my own things. Or the other day I was watching the Adult Video Awards. And I thought, what kind of weird, you know, per awards could they have for this, like best supporting anus, <laughs> best director, and then it comes up on the screen, best actress, I'm like, oh, well, girls must come up with that shit, because guys don't give a shit about acting in a porno. So the girl finally makes her way up through the crowd, you know, sucking off everyone on the way who she has to thank, and she gets up there, and I'm thinking, okay, what could she possibly have to say? God, I want to thank you for everything you've done. Mom and Dad, you were at every rehearsal. <laughs> Uncle Larry, I could have never been so kinky without your hand in all this. <laughs> yeah, so I was, a, I was kind of weird as a child. Um, I would fill a squirt gun with vinegar and chase the girls around and be like, douche, 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 douche. <laughs> Somehow it was hard for me to get a girlfriend, but uh, and then I would just like make up weird little songs and stuff, you know, just change the words to shit. Like, Three Blind Mice was real easy, so I made one up, and it goes kind of like this. Excuse me, I don't have the best singing voice. It's, it's more about content here. So it goes like this. <laughs> pussy farts, pussy farts, some smell like cum, some smell like cum. They're made from the flapping of curtains of beef. Around these parts, we call them a queef. I like them a lot, I'll give them a sneef. Pussy farts. Okay, so <laughs> while, while we've already just thrown it in the gutter, let's go even further. <laughs> what can we do? I know, blow jobs. Everybody loves them, but nobody wants to pay for them. Starting to think my prices are way too high. <laughs> Blow jobs. If you just swallow, you wouldn't have to change the sheets. <laughs> Blow jobs. A real friend will go get two and come back and give you one. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Blowjobs. If you're not sticking a finger in my ass, you're just sucking my dick. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I had the worst... I, I, like I said, I have a piece of shit car. When we go driving around, I've always got car trouble. Like last week, we went to San Francisco. I ended up blowing a tranny. There's tranny fluid all over me, all over my car. But luckily, I didn't have any car problems. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. Woo! Remember, I'm uh, contestant number D. Number D. If you, if you don't know your numbers, that's A one three two D D. Contestant number D. <laughs> Shootout is 